Well, thanks a lot, John. I'm part of um, I'm part of Maya Vision, who have a role in the making of this film, as you'll hear. Um, just a few words about it, and a few thanks to everybody who's who've brought us to this point tonight. It's a funny old business making films, though. Um, I, I, I'm. I thought I ought to say something about how Alex and Max actually got this thing together. You know, films get made in mysterious ways. And, um, and this one saw the light of day to, uh, due to what I would call a, a series of fortunate happenstances. And if I... To go really far back, I suppose I should say that Alex and, and Max first met at school in Manchester. And um, being Manx, they shared both a curiosity about the world, a reluctance to conform, uh, not to mention a healthy disregard for any form of sane career path. <laughs> and, and anyway, to cut a long story short, Alex went to Cambridge to do social and political studies, was it, Alex? Is that right? Um, but somehow, and I don't quite understand why, seemed to be able to wangle his degree into one about the history of Myanmar. And, and he spent the next few years traveling and studying and working there, while Max started work as a freelance cameraman. And then, one day, three years ago, in Myanmar, Alex found himself one night chatting to a charming and very interesting man, who it turned out was the coach of the Myanmar under-21 football team. <laughs> And he had quite a tale to tell. Over a cold Myanmar beer, he revealed that he was the great-grandson of the last king of Burma, Thibor, who had been violently overthrown by the British in 1885. The same Thibor, many of you will recall, who appears in Kipling's Road to Mandalay. Well, sometimes a story just cries out to be told, doesn't it? So the two old friends, Alex and Max, decided, somewhat optimistically, you might think, to, uh, to team up and form a production company and made a full-length film about this fascinating but completely forgotten part of Burmese history. But of course, it's one thing to want to do something like that, another entirely to pull it off. And that's where the next piece of good fortune comes in, because Alex and Max met up with Rebecca Dobbs at Maya Vision. Rebecca's here, I think, yes. And, um, and she agreed to help them in their project. Now, Rebecca's a very distinguished filmmaker, maker of scores of mainstream documentaries, award-winning films. She did Story of India for BBC Two, recently The Story of China. And she's a great enabler. And if you were trying to put forward a magnificent seven, which is what making a film really is, you'd want her on board. At first, Alex and Max were determined to try to fund the film themselves, begging and borrowing kit and resources in Myanmar and in the UK. But these days, that's never going to get you very far. And that's where the next piece of good fortune came in, because they heard about the Wickers World Foundation. This was set up by the legendary, and the word is, I use advisedly, the legendary Alan Wicker before he died, to help young filmmakers make their first full-length documentary, an act of generosity and foresight that was typical of the man. And all the more valuable now at a time when funding for documentaries is at an all-time low, and aspiring young filmmakers are finding it harder and harder to make their way in the business. The foundation, and this is where the thanks come in before we see our film, the foundation is administered by three inspiring people. Valerie Kleeman, Alan's widow. And pro <laughs> Valerie's here tonight. Producers uh, Jane Ray and Jane Moat, who lovingly and professionally follow Alan's wishes to stimulate and empower talent that might otherwise never find a voice in today's fiercely competitive and highly monetized industry. So with the help of these wonderful people and with Rebecca at My Vision, well, first of all, let's just, I'm missing one part of the story. With the help of Rebecca, um, 
Max uh, and Alex prepared a promo tape, that's right, uh, for the film, and a pitch to the foundation, I've forgotten about this bit, um, which they had to deliver to a panel of judges in front of an audience at the Sheffield Documentary Film Festival. And I can remember, uh, at my vision, the text being honed uh, in front of Rebecca and Fortini behind closed doors in our spare cutting room. And ferocious they were as critics. And I'm very pleased to say that despite the very stiff competition, the film that you're about to see became the first recipient of the Wickers World Foundation funds. But when the film was finished, Valerie and Jane and Jane didn't consider their work completed and they continued and still continue to advise and promote the film and the filmmakers, for which many thanks to all. It And it's been, it's been a really uh, exciting and involving process for us at Maya Vision 2. And we can't wait to see the results of this year's award. And then, of course, our penultimate thanks. We're very lucky that Open City Documentaries, in collaboration with the British Library, are giving We Were Kings its world premiere in such a great location tonight. But there's a last thanks. Alex and Max's greatest fortune, surely, was to meet and work with today's descendants of the Burmese royal family. <laughs> For what a story they had to tell, as you'll see. A tale that, after all, casts amazing new light onto British as well as Burmese history. So we're very fortunate to have two members of the family with us tonight. Uso Win, the now famous football coach, <laughs> with his son Min U. A very big thanks to you both for travelling all this way and being with us here tonight this evening and for sharing your story with the wider world. And uh, there'll be a question time afterwards, I think. But without more ado, let's see We Were Kings. <laughs> <laughs> 